Last week, we had Jake Chard on the podcast and discussed his favorite running memory, his weight loss journey, and a major dietary change he made that resulted in him feeling a ton better. This week, we are finishing the conversation with the Brookfield Classic, his training goals, happiness, and the Mighty Mosquito Trail Race. I would like to thank our sponsors, Native Pass Supplements, Lombardi Chiropractic, Home Sweet Home Cleaning, and Thin Line Martial Arts. If you are enjoying this content, I ask that you support these companies in the description and take advantage of the enticing discount they're providing our listeners by using our code COMO15, that's C-O-M-O-15. I thank each and every one of you for being on this journey with us. Now, please enjoy the show. Cool, dude. Let's uh, let's chat about the Brookfield Classic. Um, what was your takeaway from that race? This was the first year for us. Um, we're new at race directing. I know we've spent years and a lot of time back in the Brookfield state lands. It's, you know, 15 minutes from my house. My wife is from Brookfield. Um, so we're very familiar with the area and we loved it, which is why we made a race um, to bring people and to enjoy that. What uh, what was your thoughts on the, the race itself? Honestly, it was a blast. Um, the one negative I can think of off the top of my head, I think I talked to Andy about it maybe. Um, there's no soda. Uh, <laughs> like that that was my biggest complaint, but I I brought some, you know, and if if you guys aren't familiar with doing longer distance stuff, you know, just having cans of Coke or a two liter of Coke around is great. Ginger ale, but uh I mean that's a personal preference. Um uh but no, as as a whole, I was thinking about it on the way home. Um, so to me, what really helps define a race is the volunteers. And I'll be honest, I don't know if you had five volunteers or 50 volunteers, because especially on that first lap, they were everywhere and they were just cheering us on. And they every time I saw them, they had big old smiles and um, just as a whole. So like, sh- shout out to them um, for sure. They were they were great. Uh, I mean, that's always a testament too to the race directors for being able to get good people in. You know, as as one myself, we always try to like, all right, who you know, who can we get? And so usually friends and family, which are great. Um, but course was good. Um, I, I I think we had talked about it that day. How like every time we we're on the road, and I was like, all right, you know, like time to get time to get bored of the road. You change it changed. We went off. It was great. Um, I don't, I think I, when I was talking with Bob, he said, you guys were, like you said, you run that pretty regularly. So you must yeah. have pretty good knowledge of it. You, those last, uh, was it all downhill from here yeah. for the last three miles? That's some shenanigans, <laughs> but <laughs> that was, that was a great change of pace. Um, like I said, course was great. People were great. Um, as a whole, just, I mean, it was, it was a fantastic time. I, I had a, I had an absolute, those medals. Those things are huge. They're awesome. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, for a first year, you guys, you guys crushed it for sure. That's that's an awesome, awesome spot. Yeah, man, that means a lot. Thank you. Um, yeah, you know, we've had some meetings with other race directors prior to building this out, and um, everything that you just named was on our priority list, right? Like amazing volunteers, and shout out to them. Most of it was family for us, and we have an amazing family on both sides. Um, we we had help from about 14 people, I think. Um and we're going to hopefully recruit the same team next year. They had a blast also watching everyone and they're super inspired. Um, the medals were made from a, a company called White's Welding in Brookfield, New York. Um, so right where the uh, the race was about 10 minutes from there, it's a local shop that does welding and, you know, metal cutting and all of that. And I told them I want a sick metal because we're not doing t-shirts i'm not a huge fan of t-shirts at races normally they don't fit well or they don't look good um and so i wanted a sick piece of uh you know metal to to leave with and so yeah we got that too so um yeah that's awesome and then the the course itself um marking it you know correctly and all of that um and then the i'll you know the 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 varied terrain um yeah we thought of all of that and so that's cool because you don't really know you know um you hope people enjoy it and uh we're definitely going to do it again next year and hopefully for many years to come do you think jake that uh sub five hours is possible with the 50k oh yeah 
I, th- I think okay. it's 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 very but I <clears throat> pardon me uh, as soon as I got as soon as I left or got home I was messaging my buddies like yo you guys you, you know buddies I run with that are just that next touch uh, faster than me especially at longer distances there's there's people that could definitely throw down I think um, mm-hmm. I mean especially I. I think it was a little cooler that day. I'm, I'm trying to remember mm-hmm. the weather, but yep. uh, I mean, it's a great time of year to go fast, uh, especially mm-hmm. even if it's a little rainy or something. I feel like that wouldn't mess the course up too much if it's slick. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, just just having those road, those uh, Jeep trails, those roads. Um, I think I think sub five is is doable. Not for me, but uh, <laughs> definitely definitely for somebody else. I think it's it's very doable. Yeah, that's cool to hear because um, we're you know we're talking about that i i do think it's doable for sure the course record i think is 529 bob has that galinsky um and then jenny that took first this year she got a 530 Mm -hmm. (laughs) um she was like 42 seconds off bob's time which is wild um and so yeah sub five i definitely think is doable we had uh tyler there um that was in the lead for the first two laps he did three hours on the dot for the two laps um that's what 18 miles and so you know he was he was cranking obviously he didn't sustain that um but you know i think there are people that can for sure and i know in the the 15k um the record right now is 75 minutes and the guy brandon roman he was on our podcast last week he said sub 60 is possible on the 15k um which <laughs> Be close. <laughs> yeah. Well, think about this. Have you run the Boilermaker in Utica? I have. I'm familiar with it, but I haven't ran it. Yeah. Okay. So, like sub 60 with that race, it's a pretty flat course. There's one hilly section, but overall considered flat, especially uh, comparing to Brookfield Classic. Um, and it's on the road. Sub 60 is like that top tier. You know, it's not the winners. The winners are 42 to 45. Uh, but it's the top tier, super fast people. So I'm thinking like running that pace with um, 1,500 feet of vert, you know, hard footing, right? Horse trails, some mud. Uh, that would be pretty damn cool. But we've got a lot of years to see if that happens. So that'll be wild. <laughs> yeah, it's – I mean – you, you get the right person. I, I, you know, I'm thinking of like locals here that are wicked fast. I, they, 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 they could probably do it. You know what I mean? But it's just about mm-hmm. finding that right person. And I mean, uh, for us, so where I am, I'm just south of Rochester. And I know you guys are kind of south of Syracuse. So it's kind of pulling mm-hmm. those those people down and, uh, and and doing it. So it's not impossible. It's just it's gonna it's gonna take the right right person or two to to really stud it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. I know Brandon is a fast, fast runner. Um, and he, he said he could have, could go faster, um, on a better day. He was six days out from doing, he did the SOS triathlon in the gunks. So it's an eight stage triathlon. He had done it six days before. Um, (laughs) and so it'd be cool next year. Um, I think most everyone's coming back next year. So that'd be so cool to like compare times, you know, cause the course is going to stay the same. The only thing we're changing is we're going to add an aid station, Jake, to the South end of Woodland pond. So it would be about mile two. Um, at the start. So you know how you take a right, the second right hand turn to follow the pond down and then you hit that truck trail Mm -hmm. on that truck trail. We're going to add an aid station there. We had some people requesting that. Um, And so really that'll be the only change, you know, next year, but the course will be the same. So yeah, Um, that's not bad, especially for like those, that last three mile loop at the end. I think that that it would have been nice, but I mean, I, 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 I have no complaints. It was, it was a good day nonetheless. So, but yeah, that's yeah, a good idea. Yeah, we're going to add um, a 5K next year. Um, we had a ton of requests for the 5K distance, which makes sense. You know, a lot of people like that distance. Mm-hmm. And what's crazy is like, and you know this, from the start, running around Woodland Pond and then taking a left at that intersection, like on your very last lap there, that's exactly 3.1. <laughs> um, so that's going to be the 5K right there for people. That would, that'd be a beautiful, very scenic 5K. 
Yeah, it'll it'll let people get their feet wet, you know, with trail running. Um, if they want to go fast, they can for sure, especially on that downhill truck trail, you know. Um, and so yeah, that'll be that'll be a cool little addition. What's um what's your future training goals? What do you got going on? Like, what are you looking to do here uh, to wrap up this year or next year? What's your vision with that? So this year I got uh, two races. <laughs> potentially three uh no i've 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 got two races coming up um i've got a a hundred miler in november um called mountaineer rumble down in south carolina um so that that should be fun uh it's got about eight thousand feet of bird i think um a couple 50k loops so gonna gonna fly down have some fun with that come back then uh in December, um, like I said, my brother lives in Boston, so uh, they their their group out there is called Park Trail Animals Running Club. They put on a, a 50k and 40 miler in December, um, so that's that was the first one we did. So now it's like our annual tradition, which is great. Um, so go out that that one's just always fun. It's in Blue Hills or something. I highly recommend if anyone ever gets out that way. It's a it's a great great park. Um, and then uh yeah kind of kind of laying out the groundwork for next year got a couple uh hundred milers in the in the works um but uh other than that we uh we we put on ours and so we'll be focusing on that come come summertime and uh yeah not nothing nothing too crazy yet but uh just just more more of the same i think back pain headaches and discomfort plague the majority of humans walking around each day Chiropractic care can be the solution to feeling your best. I know for me personally, it has had a huge impact on how I feel day to day. The problem is that many people fear going to the chiropractor and getting their first adjustment. The team at Lombardi Chiropractic are the best of the best, a team that I've worked with for over 12 years. Visit their website at LombardiChiropractic.com and when you call, let them know you are a listener of the Co-Movement Gym Podcast. The majority of supplements on the market are junk and a waste of money. Lack of regulation allows these companies to sell cardboard and a pill, and they get away with it. It's important to purchase your supplements from a company you trust, which for us at Co-Movement is Native Path Supplements. Shop their products at nativepath.com and use code COMO15 for a nice discount at checkout. That's C-O-M-O-15. Law enforcement officers have one tough job. While some calls may be routine, many are not, oftentimes putting officers in unpredictable situations. Thinline Martial Arts is an apparel company that promotes defensive tactics training for officers so that they can be equipped to safely handle a hand-to-hand combat situation. Purchasing apparel from Thinline Martial Arts promotes this message and allows more officers to attend training. Go to thinlinemartialarts.com and use code COMO15, that's C-O-M-O-15, to receive a 15% discount on us. Did you know a clean house reduces anxiety, increases your productivity, improves sleep, and decreases stress? Yes, all of those health benefits just from having a clean house. The problem is that no one finds cleaning fun, except for the great folks at Home Sweet Home Cleaning. Mention the Co-Movement Gym podcast and receive 20% off deep cleans for all clients who sign on using their reoccurring services and start enjoying a clean house today. Let's uh, spend a moment talking about the race that you direct, Jake. Tell us about that. Yeah, so it's called uh, Money Mosquito. Um, It's in Menden Ponds. Um, We have a 50K option, um, a 100-mile option, and a uh, team relay for the 100 miler, well, 99 miles. Um, we're, we're really nice where if you're doing the solo, you uh, complete about 99 miles and then you have to run up a hill, grab a stone and bring it back to us. Um, so it's really nice. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good time. We took it over this year from our buddies and um, made a couple changes and it turned out pretty well, I think. We, we had our first female finisher, uh, Jenny in a couple of years. So that was, that was really fair. Her time was, uh, we marked it wrong because we were all giving her big hugs at the end. And, uh, she messaged us. She goes, you guys missed my time by like half an hour. Cause we were doing the timing ourselves. I'm like, Oh, well we gave you hugs. So it's, it's, it's a fair trade, but <laughs> went back and made those changes. So yeah. How many participants did you have this year, Jake? 
So we get about, uh, for our 50K, we had 25 to 30. Um, solo hundreds, we had uh, 13 or 14. Um, but it, so it, it all goes to a charity um, that, that our buddies have and we're, we're on the board for. Um, it's called the Blue Foundation. But uh, so two of them are one of our buddies who we ha- was the race director and is on the board. He just wanted to go out and see how many he could do. So we knew he wasn't going to finish most likely. And then our other buddy, Phil, literally signed up like the day before or something. He goes, hey, I'm just I'm going to come. So he showed up an hour and a half late, ran 20 miles. I was like, right, I'll see you guys later. <laughs> um, he just got his T-shirt and left. Uh, but uh, yeah. Um, so, and then for the teams, we had uh maybe 10 or 15 i'm 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 more of the uh the 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 course uh not not the logistics part of it (laughs) um but yeah in total we had about 100 people show up which was great damn that's great that is so cool did you enjoy the process of directing and all the work before and during did you enjoy that yeah it's it's uh it was so we've we were co-race directors slash guest race directors in years prior so we kind of had you know as far as day of um the knowledge that went into it um but then actually the whole ordering of swag ordering uh getting food and this and that and like planning group runs as preview runs um it was fun uh so i really love that park uh, like i said my Nippons park um so when i we changed for the hundred miler. We changed it from five and a half mile loops to ten mile loops. Um, so I got a chance to kind of stretch the legs a little bit and like find random parts of the park to help connect them all. So that was the most fun part, mostly because I just got to go run and uh, got to log it as work hours. <laughs> um, so it was it was a lot of fun that way. But it it was as as you know, I mean, it's it's a blast, and you can see those. You know, when when everyone goes out for that first loop after flagging it and like, you're like oh, they should have been here two minutes ago. What's going on? Where is everybody? Um, and then people start coming in. You know, it's just it's a relief. And then you get halfway through and you're a little tired, but it's OK. And at the end, you're just, you know, you just think back of all the great memories and watching your friends finish, watching, uh, you, you know, whether it's the first 50K, watching team relays just go out and, you know, people that don't know each other are now best friends. and it's, it's such a, such a magical experience being on the other side for sure. Yeah. Everything you just said is what I took away, um, from our race. It was like, I made so many friends and it was so cool to see the huge accomplishments for pretty much everyone there. You know, you're quite experienced, so it wasn't so new for you, but a lot of people, this was like a really big deal and it and it oh, should have yeah. been right like whether it was their first 15k trail run maybe first 15k ever let alone first ultra mm-hmm. you know there was a lot of a uh, lot of people that had something that they really walked away with um and i love building the experience like just the whole thing right like the long drive back the smoky campfire you know like just it's so it's i just wanted something so unique that really there was just nothing like that around um and so that's the part i enjoy and obviously building out the the course itself and this and that and i don't know it's just really neat to see like you're almost living vicariously through the people doing it um even though like you created it (laughs) um but it's uh yeah i could feel i could feel everything through through the runners you know like just what they were going through and I don't know, just the enjoyment of being there, you know? Uh, so yeah, you and I are very similar, similar with that, with the race build out. Last question. Um, you're a really happy guy by nature, just from like the moment I met you, you smile, you have a, a good energy. Not a lot of people have a really good energy. You do. What are you like, if you were to give advice to, to someone that wants to increase the happiness in their life, what would you tell them? Oof. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, you just gotta, this might sound cliche, but you just gotta live in the moment and just, you know, be grateful for everything that you can do. Um, you know, whether that's able, whether that's being able to go out and run 15 K 50 K or just, um, you know, just being surrounded by friends, family. Um, I mean, that, that's a big one. Just making sure you're surrounded by happy people. Um, 
I mean, the simplest answer I have is go run because I just love it. And like, you, you know, there, 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 there aren't many places or things I'd drive two and a half hours in the morning for to go run and then drive home at night or and go do the drive home at night. But um, I mean, you know, with, with, without going into all the dark, dark details, you, you know, there's 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 negativity out there and you just got to realize that every day is going to be better than the last if you just put a little effort into it and you just look look for the silver lining in the clouds and realize that hopefully your worst days are behind you and if they're not then tomorrow can be better after after that one yeah yeah i like that jake a lot positive the positive mindset yeah for sure um that's great advice buddy well um, if people want to reach out to you, um, is Instagram the best way or do you want to put another thing out there for people to connect with you? Yeah, Instagram works. Um, not a big, not a big social guy, but, uh, um, your best way is to come out, come out to, uh, uh our, our way or, you know, put, put up a race and I'll, I'll come find you. But, uh, yeah, no, Instagram works. I don't know what my handle is. Probably charred dot Jake or something like that. Uh, maybe an R at the Been end. There. <laughs> Initially, yeah. I'm on Facebook as Jake Chard. Um, Strava is a good one. <laughs> yeah. Nice, dude. Well, this is um, awesome, man. We can talk a lot. I look forward to seeing you. Um, if not at your race, which we're talking about that, it's in, I, I'm curious, possibly doing it. I've never done a 50K. I know Bob mentioned wanting to do it. Um, I think even Andy threw it out there, too. So maybe you have a group of us come out and do your race. Um cool. You know, and so, but if not, you know, we'll see you next year, hopefully at the Brookfield yeah. Classic. And uh, the thank, title, right? yeah, exactly, dude. And uh, thank you for taking the time today, Jake. It's a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, my pleasure, Josh. Thank you guys. And again, thank you for a great race and a just overall great experience. It was an absolute blast. Highly mm -hmm. recommend Brookfield Classic. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Absolutely. Thank you. One last message. I ask that you please check out our show sponsors, Lombardi Chiropractic, Home Sweet Home Cleaning, Native Pass Supplements, and Thin Line Martial Arts. Their links are in the description. Not only do these companies produce outstanding products and services, but they're providing an enticing discount to all listeners who use code COMO15, that's C-O-M-O-15, at checkout or when you give them a call.